afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are around the world. This is Chris Finolio with the blog of therange.com. So pleased to welcome Stephen Hunter with us here today. As you know, Stephen was the actor in the three Hobbit films. Uh, he was a very large presence in these films. <laughs> As you know, he, was, he, was, he played the part of Bomber. So Stephen, welcome. Thanks. Sure Thanks. It. Thank you. Hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, just fine. Just and fine. You, you, can, you can see the, see the poster. That was, that's a, that, that was a picture that we got um, on oh, the, the final painting? day. On the film, yeah, it was a, it was a painting we all got given. So, and you might see the maps. <laughs> so oh, nice. I'm sort of de on the other side you can't see, but I've got a, a nice uh, photo of is the whole cast. Um, I was on our very last day that that they took that you, you're probably familiar with. You know, I, I saw both them handed in the appendixes of of the <clears throat> of the DVDs and the Blu-rays. You know, the, yeah. the wonderful material there. They showed that presentation of the of all the paintings. And they did a still of that uh, photo. Yeah, with you, yeah. everybody, and with Martin and and with Peter Jackson. So what a what a great cast for that whole film. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was, it was very cool. Well, and you know, like I said, Bomber had such a large presence on the screen. Literally, I mean, how long did it take you to get made up every morning on the days that you you know uh, shot? Uh, look, it got quicker um, over time. It, it was uh, initially it was um, probably about two and a half hours to start with. That's just for prosthetics, and then um, <clears throat> um, yeah, then after that, it, 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 we, we probably got it down to oh, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, but I had two prosthetics artists with me, so you know that that sort of. Uh, made things a bit quicker because I had five pieces. I had my main face piece and then there was yeah. the, the bald spot and then there was the chin. And then we went all went for breakfast, all of us just with these bald heads. And then we, <laughs> th then we got our hair on afterwards because it's, it's pretty hard to eat with some of them. Uh, Peter Hamilton, who played Gloin especially, he, he needed chopsticks sometimes to try and get his, his, <laughs> his hair apart so he could actually eat some, eat some lunch. Oh, my. Yeah, hard to move around <clears throat> in all, all the... All the yeah. costume and everything. Yeah. Um, and so much you, you had, like you said, you had five different prosthetics on your face. Mm. So much of what mm. you had to do acting wise was all in your eyes, since mm. that was really the only part of your face that was, you know, actually yours. You know, was that hard to do or? Yeah. And, and it was, it was hard outside. And, and I know Mark probably suffered the most. I remember one time because he'd worked with Peter so many times. So, so Peter used to sort of, you know, rouse them a little bit, you know, just friendly. But uh, there was a time when we were outside and they changed the mix of the prosthetics because it was all silicon um, because they were worried it was going to melt in the in the heat because we, we were shooting in summer in New Zealand, uh, you know, around the mountains, etc. And he wanted more expression, but the, the, the silicon was so thick, it was, uh, it's very hard to act through it. So you, you kind of almost have to, you know, be a stage actor in a way, you know, you, you have to... Uh, um, yeah, just really overdo things to try and get through. And it, it, it's, it's right, you know, with your eyes, I mean, that, that's what it's all about anyway with camera stuff. But, uh, sure. yeah, sometimes we really had to, you know, really had to work it. <laughs> right. Well, and I guess Peter gave you cues, you know, specific instructions, try to you know, look in a particular way or, to, you know, to make yeah. the scene work. Yeah, yeah look, you know, a, a lot of it was, you know, we, we'd have a lot of stuff going on and he, he really couldn't, um, he couldn't see it, you know, so... But that was just due to the prosthetics. So, uh, but you know, he, he. But the thing with Pete, he'd act it out himself. He, he'd he'd play it out and do all the noises, and you'd hear noises in the the background because he had this tent, and we called it the voice of God. And it was, you know, he had a microphone, and he'd because a lot of times he was monitoring second unit at the same time. So, um, but yeah, it was it was fun. And then, but he, you know, he'd come on set, of course, and he'd he'd sort of, uh, you know, try and act stuff out with us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I imagine, you know, running and doing all that physical stuff in that suit. It reminded me, Michael Keaton was on The Tonight Show once when he first mm. appeared as Batman, you know, mm. and he said, you prepare, but eventually you just got to work the suit, you know, wh mm. what you're wearing on set and just, you know, make it happen. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Some of the same experiences with that big fat suit. Yeah, well, and mine was quite comfortable. It was like wearing a whole lot of duvets and you know, big, big blankets over you. Uh, oh. I, mine wasn't as heavy. Like it was heavy in Lake Town. It was, the arm was definitely heavy and, you know, my arm started to go numb, but generally speaking, 
the, the, the clothes were quite light, unless they got wet. When they got wet, they were, you know, they were crazy. I think um, my stunt guy, when we did the barrel scenes, um, actually on the Polaris River, the out, the out, cause there were so many different parts to that scene that was shot over, over several months. Um, but my stunt man got out and weighed himself and it was 185 kilos, uh, which is, you know, and, and, and I think I need four guys to lift me up and I had to sort of walk up the hill for lunch. Thanks guys. Wow. <laughs> um, but, but, but generally speaking, it was pretty good. It looked really uncomfortable, but it was pretty snug. Oh, that's great. Well, and so much of, uh, Bomber's action was heavy, you know, kind of, you know, comic relief. Uh, mm. Do you have, you know, you know, he was catching food in his mouth or he's on the mm. table and he falls and stuff like that. Did some of your previous work uh, prepare you for that type of comedy uh, action? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I think I, I got into comedy from a, from a young age um, at school. I did a lot of school musicals and plays um, when I was, I guess, in first year in college. So in high school. So, um, yeah, I'd always always gone for comedy, and, and there was a few lines in there to start with, and then I got a I got a, an email from 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 Pete and Fran and Phil just saying, look, you know, we've had we've had quite a lot of uh, yeah, a few lines in here for you, um, but they're thinking of taking those out and making me a like a non-speaking character, but creating a whole lot of physical gags. And I remember talking to my agent; she's like, well, you know, you don't want to give up the lines, and I'm like, yeah, but you know, should I? You know, is it worth fighting for like four or five? lines of dialogue with you know six or seven other guys or you know i can make myself unique and because the character himself was so big and i had the size it, it was really just a lesson and not trying to do too much because the character spoke for himself and then it was you know as you say it's subtleties and you know i just from an acting perspective i always have a point of view about what i'm doing and i've always got a point of view about everybody and i always make sure i'm doing something and then i let the size take care of itself and i just made sure that I, I was alive the whole time um so that's kind of w where it went and and i ended up with some really good physical gags which i think served me better and served the character better yeah oh, most definitely and uh, again welcome to everybody watching we're talking with stephen hunter who played uh bomber in the, the hobbit films and we always ask an actor you know what's a charity that um he'd like to publicize and and stevens is the actor's benevolent fund of new south wales and stephen why, why is that important to you well you know obviously it's been a pretty crazy time um within the world and a lot of people have lost jobs and lost income and in australia unfortunately um we're we're lumbered with a government who really doesn't care for the arts at all um in New Zealand, where I, you know, originally come from, they're supporting the arts in a big way. Um, so, but in Australia, they've really been ignored. So recently there was a, you know, there was a, a, a few funds that basically paid employers to play their employee, employees. And it's, it's covered a lot of industries and it's, it's really helped people out. But the arts didn't qualify because you had to be employed for 12 months. And nowhere in the arts or, you know, performances does that happen. So there's a, a huge amount of... Um, you know, performers like crew as well, but also actors who do, especially live performers, where shows have been put off and they've got no way of recouping any of that money. So, you know, I mean, it's always been important, the Benevolent Fund, and, you know, there's chapters all around Australia. And it's just, you know, because we work in an industry where it's, you just cannot, you can't guarantee where your work's going to come from. And right. it's a choice. And especially now, it's been taken out from under them. So, yeah, that was the reason why, because I, a lot of my fellow actors are, are really doing it tough at the moment. Well, that's great. And when we post this video on the mm. blog of the rings, uh, that'll be a web page and it'll have a great. link to that donate button. So thank great. you. Great. Yeah. And, and I'm also, you know, and, and, I mean, there's a few things like I do cameo as well. And I think over the weekend, all my cameo was going through the NAACP empowerment program. And I've also got a Patreon page, um, Stephen Hunter on, on Patreon. And, and, you know, I, over the summertime, I donated a whole, whole lot of money to the bushfires over here. And so, you know, through that Patreon page, if a if need comes up, I'll, you know, I'll usually sort of put some money to those charities as well. Yeah, great. Now, there, when I was watching the appendixes, there was, I, I caught something, um, and I, I think this is accurate, but you know the scene where Bomber is blowing the, the horn right before Thorn's charge near mm. the end of, uh, in the, the Battle of the Five Armies. And there mm. was a great close-up, and they showed some behind-the-scenes Peter, you were up there, and they had the big horn and everything. You balanced mm. it and everything. And Peter said something about, do you need – what I thought he was talking about was fake tears. And yeah. you said, no, you know, just on my acting. And so they showed that, 
and you did a wonderful performance. Not only did, you, did your eyes bulge because you were blowing that big horn, but you, you know the tears came. Mm. But that in in the final film, they showed your eyes bulging, but they cut right before the tears came. It, what was it that he asked you to think about um, during that scene? Was it um, for the reason for the tears? I guess. Is... Oh, look, you know, I, I knew what the setup. I mean, th this was saving his mates etc you know and, and it was a really big moment and um you know after everything that they'd, they'd been through and you know pete made because sometimes it's easier some they just put little teardrops yeah you know, put, put drops in people's eyes and i'm like well i studied miser you know and miser is all about you know we create it's being truthful in imaginary circumstances so being able to cry on cue i can do um and i, I was probably a bit of a smart a smart aleck i'm going no i'll just use my acting which is the words i use but I was like, no, I've got this. I, and, and it felt more real to me to, to do that. Um, that. It was funny because that, that horn thing, we actually attempted it the day before and it was, it was being held up by a, like a wire, but it was slightly off balance and I was a little bit off, a little bit out of whack and it really was getting my back quite badly. Um, Richard Taylor himself brought it up on set and you know head of weather and he goes look sorry Stephen, we haven't had time to do a lightweight version so this is made of fiberglass and it was quite heavy but on the second day i, I said just take the take the wire off or slacken it off and I'll, I'll take all the weight myself and that's what i did in the end because i, I found even though it was heavy it was easier to balance um, oh yeah yeah that could have been the other reason for the eyes bulging and the tears <laughs> <laughs> oh so very true and mm. also you know i hope fans out there uh, a lot of them have seen, or most, I hope most of them have seen the extended versions of this film, mm. and especially the extended version of Battle of Five Armies, mm. Bomber gets his, you know, one <clears throat> line when he brings mm. the axe, you know, piece back to, his, you know, his cousin, Bif Bifer. So, um, what was that like? Or, you know, did you do a special voice when you said that line, or was it just pretty natural? Oh, we trained for like six or seven weeks before we started filming, like doing accent. And our accent was Northern Irish because Jimmy Nesbitt <clears throat> was playing my brother Bofa. Yeah. That's, that was his natural accent. And he doesn't really do accent. So he, he just does Jimmy. So, you know, um, you know, we had to sort of keep training, you know, Hono, Branco, which is like a, you know, just to practice the, North, the Northern Irish. And it's a more a country Northern Irish, not a real hard and fast Belfast, like, you know, Liam Neeson has, has played out a few times. But okay. so, and I only got that line at the lunch break on our very last day of pickups in 2013. Um, I, I just didn't think I'd have a line and I was quite happy not to have a line by that stage. And then they go, oh, here, here's your line for this afternoon. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, look, it, it was, it was it was fun. It was good, and it it just gives people something else to talk about. And you know the line there in the in the the extended edition. And there's a bit more of our fighting because we spent we spent days and days, you know, uh, doing fighting for that movie. And when the when the theatrical version came out, we were in the at the premiere in L.A. at the Dolby Theater, and and we were like, what? what we, they cut away from us, and then we thought, oh, they'll come back, and they never did. And we were like, oh, okay. What, wonder what happened with that fighting, but it came back in the, in the extended version, which I think's I think that's Pete's version. I I, I think that's, I think that's so the one. I think that's the one that he really wanted. That's the same way with Lord of the Rings too. I mean, you recommend the you know it's twelve hours, but that's the definitive version of you know totally. Peter Jackson's you know yeah. And uh, you mentioned Jimmy Nesbitt, you know. So mm. in in the story, you two are brothers, but. It, mm. You know, as he was talking, it sounded like you struck up a kind of a brotherly relationship, you know, off screen too. Is that? Yeah, well, like, you know, I'm, I'm younger than Jimmy um, and not by great stretch, but, but enough. And, you know, he's a very well-known actor. And I guess I was kind of in awe of Jimmy a bit and pretty followed him around. Um, Jimmy, like myself, is quite social. He enjoys his wine. He enjoys his rugby. And you know, being a being a Kiwi myself, I, I definitely enjoy rugby. So we did spend a lot of time together. And the Rugby World Cup was on in 2011 in New Zealand at the time, and we hadn't won it for 24 years. Um, so Jimmy met the marketing manager for the Rugby World Cup, who was an Irishman as well. So you know, and he said to me very early, "Guys, I'm taking you to the final." I said, "Okay, cool." And so we did, and we went to all these games and we sort of hung out and yeah, it was great. He, he was, he was a lot of fun and he's, he, he's a country boy, you know, like me. So uh, yeah, we, we got on really well. And did you see the all blacks play? 
Oh, we saw the All Blacks play many times. You know, I always saw the yeah, and you know, my dad who was my dad passed away. Um, sort of, uh, he got to see the premiere of the Desolation of Smile, but he, he didn't get to see um, in the Battle of Five Armies. Probably just as well, <laughs> but um, but you know, I, I took him to see one of the games in the Rugby World Cup, and and I remember one of the the you know, one of the last great experiences he had was they had a, we were watching rugby at um, Ian McCallan's place, the Syrians, and there was a rugby test match, <clears throat> and there was like, you know, five or six guys, and we were in his bedroom because there was a dinner party going on, and we were in there watching rugby, and uh, I'll never forget it because my dad had the the best time, and he got to meet one of his idols, uh, Billy Connolly, and he goes, "Do you think he'd mind having a chat?" I said, "No," and Billy sat there and you know stood there, and he was just had this. Big old chat with my mum and dad, and yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. I'll never forget that. He's oh, a pretty special awesome. guy. Yeah. So, and you said you're from New Zealand, but you live <clears> in <throat> Sydney right now. Did, did you uh, did you live in Sydney during the filming? No. Um, yes, we. I, I did. I moved to Sydney in 2003 <clears throat> from New Zealand, um, and yeah, like 2010. Uh, well, it's actually before then, probably the year before. My mum and dad were in Sydney visiting, and I was like, you know. I heard about The Hobbit being filmed, so I reconnected with my New Zealand agent, and I said, look, I really want to do this, you know, and I want to go through you because I think I've got a better chance of, of getting in through New Zealand. <clears throat> so that's how it started. So I actually flew to New Zealand from Sydney to do my audition in Auckland. I didn't tell them I was based in Sydney. My agent didn't tell them I was based in Sydney because I wanted to get in front of the casting directors because they hadn't seen me before, and I, th I thought, it was a, thought it was a good move. So, yeah. But, yeah, I've, I've been in Sydney now for, like, 17 years. Sure, and when you know it took two and a half years to film the three Hobbit film, you know, yeah. movies, did you like um, move back to, to New Zealand for the whole time, or did you go back and forth during certain breaks? Or oh, look, we uh, because of um, uh, Martin's Freeman's schedule, um, and because Martin turned down the Hobbit to start right. with because he was committed to doing Sherlock, and then Pete changed the whole the whole schedule of, of the film and we shot in three blocks and we had two high ads periods. So over that time we came back to Sydney and just did a, had a short term rental, but they in Wellington, they gave us a house for the whole time. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. They were, they were amazing. You know, they, they really looked after us um, exceptionally well. Um, so we had everything we needed over there. And then we'd, we'd come back to Sydney for, for a few weeks, you know, and see all the family and go and go and see everybody and then get back into crazy movie world again. No, yes, absolutely. So, um, so I had this thought, you know, <clears throat> even though Bomber had the one line, you know, by and mm. large, he wasn't spoke. So imagine Bomber was stuck at home for like nine weeks because of the coronavirus. And he really developed, you know, some really good uh, recipes, you know, since he's mm. the cook and everything. What would Bomber, tell us what, what Bomber would say, you know, would be his favorite dinner to uh, enjoy at night? Well, I guess it depends on the season. And, you know, and, I do cook a lot. I, I, I cook, you know, I, I, uh, we actually had a, we had a, we had a street scone baking competition um, last mm -hmm. weekend, which I won. So I, I'm now the, uh, the purveyor of award-winning scones on our street. Um, <laughs> I, I cook like a casserole. I'm a big fan of Anthony Bourdain. Um, and I, I basically use his beef bourguignon recipe. So I think, I think Bomber would be cooking like a big casserole, a big stew, something warm and something hearty um, and lots of it. I'm, I'm sure because he'd want a, two or three helpings himself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting because with all the characters, there's a, a, so much of each actor's personality in all these characters, you know, myself, where you look at Mark Hadlow, who's a bit of a nana, you know, he, he's, you know, everyone's, everyone's like that. I love Mark. And, you know, there's so much of, of us in these characters and we got to do that. We got to add more to it as well. So tell me just, um, Describe, I'm going to just jot out a few uh, words, and I don't need a one-word answer, but just, you know, describe a little bit what, what you think about, um, and I've asked this of other actors before, and um, uh, to fans that, you know, have watched the appendices, you know, scene 88 is, was that scene where you guys are out running forever mm. to escape the wards and the, and the orcs before mm. you found the path to Rivendell. So, what what comes to mind when you hear the word scene eighty eight? Just exhaustion and heat. I've actually got a, I've got a singlet. I've got a running singlet in, in my in my cupboard, which which says the uh, um, scene eighty eight marathon. <clears throat> <laughs> and yeah, because a few a few of them, like most of the time, there were stunt guys. But I remember there was myself, um, Jed Brophy. 
because Jed can handle anything, and William Kircher, and we were running with the stunt guys, and then all the other boys were off having coffees or doing what, whatever they were doing. Um, but it was just it just went on and on, and that was the gag. The senior eighty eight just went forever. There must have been weeks shooting that, um, you know. And part part of me thinks, did he get it all? Did he just want to just put us through that <laughs> a little bit more? He has that sort of sadistic streak to him, Pete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a in a lovely way, but yeah. Right. So when you think of Weta Workshop, what comes to mind? Genius. Um, the, the guys are Weta and, you know, the, they're the best in the world. And it's one of my favorite places in the world, aside from Park Road Post, because I'm a soundie. But, you know, um, yeah, just, just magical, um, that whole place. There's a uh, memorable, uh, memorable scene with the trolls where you guys were all in a uh, dwarf kebab, just yes. turning on a spit. What was that mm. like? Did well, I was actually, in, I, I was in the sack. I, I was oh, in, in the right. sack on the ground. So I was, I was tied up. Well, the, the other boys, um, yeah, I remember that because, because a lot of the time it was the stunt guys. Um, and there was, I don't know, there used to be this YouTube clip about this like prairie dog or like squirrel just going, you know, um, was it Kevin, Kevin, Dave, Dave, you know, like that. And there was a guy called Dave, and that they used to just say that the whole time. I actually got really, I got covered in, in uh, troll snot at that because I got thrown across the room and all, and I got all that stuff put on me for a full day or two days, and oh, it never my. even made the movie. But, <laughs> so. Oh yeah, you were the one that uh, Bilbo said you know had worms in the bag. Yes, there. yes, <laughs> yes. So when you hear uh, the name Peter Jackson, Sir Peter Jackson, what do you think? Oh, again, the word genius. I think I think him and, and, and Richard Taylor, are, you know, two peas in the pod. I mean, just relentless too. Like, they work so hard, those two together. And they expect hard work from all their crew. But, you know, I don't think anyone works as hard as, as either of them. But, you know, Pete, Peter's a genius and he's got everything in his head. I mean, he said it himself. No one could have pulled off that movie with all the obstacles and the late start and him taking over and... No one could have pulled it off. Dan Henner, who's the, you know just an amazing yeah. production designer, basically said that it was like laying tracks as the train was coming, and that's how they how they did that movie. So, you know, I know he's not really he's doing some other things at the moment. I, I think there's a Beatles documentary or something right. um, coming up, and you know, obviously that amazing World War One movie. Uh, but yeah. yeah, he's he, he's he's just a, a genius. And it's not, you know, ask him about planes and about the wars, and, and that's where he really gets lit up as well. All right, he knows a lot about Sir Edmund Hillary and, and things like that. So, yeah, he's yeah. a, a yeah. font of knowledge. So um, I didn't ask you directly, but what was your favorite scene of all three movies that you were part of? Oh, look, they, they vary for different reasons. I mean, I, I love the running from, from Bayorns because that was a moment that I really got to myself. And, you know, that – and no one tells you, like, on three days you're going to be doing this big run. You just read the script and you have to prepare. And we went for big walks and we'd obviously done a lot of physical training. And I turned up on the day and I had my big dwarf boots on and I quickly said to, to the wardrobe team, look, have you got my runners? Can you please go get them? And I found out that they weren't going to see my feet. And so I did my runners and then – we were just lining up and Pete's like, okay, so you guys are, uh, you got to go pretty fast here because, uh, because uh, you're running from the bear and he, he'll probably eat you. So it's life and death. So, uh, and he goes, don't, don't, don't pretend to run fast. You, you need to run fast because otherwise it'll look silly if you, if you, if you're trying to slow yourself down. So go as fast as you can. And uh, Steven, you, uh, uh, you, you just go faster action. <laughs> and, and that was it. And we had three takes of it and, and it, it worked really well. Um, the barrels were fun. You know, we did the barrels in the in the Polaris River, which is such a crazy day. It was it was so much fun. Then we did like weeks of barrels in this big, like a go kart track with two V eight engines either side, just propelling us around. There was even guys on in you know shopping trolleys pretending to be in barrels, and so so that was that was a cool scene. And and I can't forget the very first one we did, which was Bag End, and we were sitting in the Bag End. Uh, I was sitting next to Adam Brown, as a matter of fact, and and just saying this is just surreal what we're doing at the very start of it. And did they make a mistake? Cause there's, there was more than one Adam Brown on IMDb. There's more than one Stephen Hunter. And like, did we, <laughs> have they picked the wrong guy? And then Ian walked out dressed as Gandalf and like, okay, it's about to get real. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, you've been so great talking with us for such a long time. I do want to ask you about any yeah, projects yeah. you've got coming up. I, uh, 
uh, your, uh, I guess, Escape from Pretoria with uh, Daniel Radcliffe is coming out mm. soon. Or yeah, well, the, the, yeah, well, I, I'm not too sure of the release dates worldwide, but I know, I know it's, it's been released in a few places. Uh, it was released on digital a couple of weeks ago in Australia, and it, it's done very well. Uh, I get to play as uh, as father, um, and that's oh, a South okay. African South African movie. Um, so that was that was really good. I'm, you know, I'm I, basically the very start of the movie, and then a lot of it's about it's about being in pri about the prison. But um, I did another movie called Two Heads Creek, which is a a sort of schlocky, a cross between The Castle, which is this very famous, very, very Australian movie, and something like Shaun of the Dead um, that, that is done very well. Um, and also um, also just wrapped on um, a movie called Children of the Corn, um, right. which is a remake of Stephen King's you know, novel. And that, it's all up on IMDb. And, you know, th that was one of, the, one of two movies that actually uh, managed to keep filming or start and continue and finish filming during the whole COVID period, uh, which was a miracle. Um, but they followed all the protocols, and that was an amazing experience. So that'll be our next year, I imagine. Um, and we've got a few TV shows that are about to restart, and I've got another movie that was put off that'll that'll restart shortly. So um, in the meantime, I'm doing lots of this kind of stuff. I do voiceovers. This is actually my voice booth. I'll just give you a little. That's my little voiceover oh, studio, nice. which is which is in my office, um, and I do this, and also do audio books. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm sort of reading currently reading an audio book at the moment. So, um, and I guess the other thing I, I do, I do a few podcasts. I've got one called Yeah 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 Nah Sweet, which is myself and a New Zealand mate, and we're just talking about events of the day. Um, and I've got my podcast of uh, um, actors talk about themselves, which I've interviewed all my Hobbit mates, um, and they're available on my Patreon page. Um, and I do an exclusive one for some of my VIP room patrons called uh, there was this one time in dwarf camp which is essentially <laughs> like a q and a and they they send in questions and i do those sort of once a month as well so yeah i'm trying to keep busy <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah I, I need to dial into some of those those are great yeah so, well Stephen, thank you for so much for your time today it's been a pleasure no talking to you and um uh, fans look for this interview on the blog of the range.com coming soon. And there's other articles there that you'll enjoy. Steven, thanks again. And hope to see you again in the future. No problem. My Take pleasure. Care. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yep. Cheers.